Welcome. I'm Stephanie Shipp, and I lead a data science group at the University of Virginia's Biocomplexity Institute. And I am delighted to be joined by my colleagues, Joe Salvo and John Thompson, who are co-presenters today. Joe is the former uh, New York City chief demographer, and John is the former Census Bureau director. Uh, they are both now Institute Fellows in the Biocomplexity Institute at the University of Virginia. Um, and some of the other, my other team is on as well, Steve Jost and Sally Keller. Uh, so today, what we want is to seek your input and your vision for what a 21st century census curated data enterprise might look like. Um, the CDE is a scaffold for the statistical products first approach that Sally Keller, the chief scientist at the US Census Bureau described at the conference on Tuesday. And I wanna echo Sally's plea. We need your help, we need your input. So I'm going to just give a very brief overview with a slightly different example than Sally gave the other day. Um, and then we will leave most of the time for a discussion. The first discussion will be led by John and the second discussion by Joe. Um, I was told that you use chat for observations, but Q&A for the discussion. So let's get started. I'm going to step back for just a second and talk about the history. Um, that just helps set the stage for the rest of the talk and why the University of Virginia is collaborating with the Census Bureau. Um, when John Thompson was the Census Bureau director, he asked the Jason study group, he said, starting with a blank sheet of paper, how would you design the 2030 census? They came up with a very simple and elegant solution, simply count the people and place them in the states. So a working group was formed led by Ken Pruitt and Sally Keller. And as we work through establishing the feasibility for the Jason recommendations, we were primarily looking at whether it was constitutionally and legislatively allowed um, to take this approach, which it is, um, we came to the realization that the decennial census and the ACS are more than just about apportionment and redistricting. They are an important national public good information platform. And as a result of that thinking and those discussions, our vision expanded. And that's when we proposed a 21st century curated data enterprise. And that encompasses all of the Census Bureau's uh, data products and, and surveys and all the work that they do. Along the way, the Sloan Foundation and the Census Bureau has funded us. They are doing that to help us accelerate and advance this vision, as well as to identify and characterize stakeholders and socialize this vision for a curated data enterprise, or what we also call the CDE, and to develop a research agenda to illuminate those capabilities that need to be built in the CDE. So what is the curated data enterprise? Um, this quote by Rob Santos, the director of the US Census Bureau, nicely summarizes it, and it, it also frames it because the CDE is aligned with the transformation and modernization that the Census Bureau is undergoing. This transformation and modernization is to create a single enterprise data-centric operation that allows many, many sources of data to be funneled into a single data lake. And then Rod just nicely summarizes that as this is the essence of a curated data approach, assemble, assess, and fill in the gaps to create quality statistical data. So what does this mean? It means that now we can create statistical products in an agile, timely, and creative way. These statistical products can address issues that no one survey by itself can answer. So what does all this mean? Um, it means that we need to flip the focus. We need to determine what information stakeholders need to reach their objectives. And from there, shape these statistical products to be developed. So this is a paradigm shift for the Census Bureau and it's called statistical product first approach. It means that we start with the end in mind and we identify the purpose and use for a statistical product. And then we bring together many sources of data cutting across surveys and administrative data and even opportunity data that we scrape from the web and procedural data. So what are examples of purposes and uses? We heard lots of them when we met with stakeholders over the last year or so and had discussions with experts. They include things like 
how do we ensure that our data products are equitable and inclusive, that they represent all populations as well as being accessible to all? How do we count children, especially those that are very young, the zero to four that are traditionally undercounted? How do we create family units out of administrative data? And what are those questions that we can ask about rural and rural communities and tribal nations and how do we identify those data sources or methods to create data so that we can answer those with high quality and accuracy. There's many, many other um, purposes and uses that uh, we heard. Um, how do we measure the unhoused or migration in the event of climate change events or the gig economy that has become increasingly important, especially during the pandemic. And as you can see from the list on the on the slide, there's other purposes and uses, but we wanna hear from you. What are the purposes and uses that you would like to see statistical products created from? So we are at the beginning of a journey and this is a continuous journey ahead. Um, the steps include eliciting purpose and use, leveraging all the massive data assets that we have, identifying gaps in data, and then using that to inform new data collection, and then disseminating these statistical products in ways that meet users where they are at their level of data acumen. And then the cycle begins again to create new statistical products or to continue to refine the ones we have created. So I wanna give an exemplar, and this is from a demonstration project or a demonstration use case that we just finished about skilled nursing facilities and flooding events. And of course, skilled nursing facilities make the news every time there's a hurricane, and of course, during the pandemic when there is increased isolation um, of residents in those nursing homes. So the purpose and use questions that we came up with from talking to experts and doing a deep dive into the literature review was first that we needed a comprehensive picture of skilled nursing facility care, the residents, the staff, the owners, and the characteristics of those nursing homes. Then we, once we had that comprehensive picture, we could begin to address questions related to emergency preparedness, and in our case, for our demonstration, we focused on flooding events. We then leveraged all data. We undertook a deep data discovery and identified dozens of sources of data. We inventoried them, screened them, and then chose the ones that you see on the screen. With many of the statistical products that we are working on, the American Community Survey is always front and center. Uh, they're foundational to much of the work that we do. And then the other data that we identified were uh, flood risks from FEMA, community assets from Homeland Security, and travel routes from different transportation departments. And finally, the gold mine of data was those from the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, where they have publicly available, easily, to down easily uh, downloadable data about nursing, skilled nursing facilities. So from there, we were able to identify the data gaps, which our survey results are often one to two years out of date. So we need to supplement, integrate, and create new data products that are closer to real time and then validate them using our survey data. This also helps to inform new data collection. And in this case, for a use case, what we wanna do is identify those capabilities that we want to build in the curated data enterprise in the CDE. And on the screen are just examples of some of the capabilities that we did develop, which begin to form the foundation for a research agenda to build that CDE use case by use case. And then finally, disseminating the statistical products. Um, again, meeting users where they are. We put everything into a publicly available GitHub repository, the data sources, the, the data, the code, the visualizations, and following the mantra of meeting users where they are. We also created just a simple table with the almost 300 skilled nursing facilities in Virginia that was at the core of our use case and provided all the characteristics of those from the, um, their emergency preparedness indexes that we created to the community assets, to the risk factors about whether or not staff could make it to work. And so even your most, um, uh, somebody that doesn't know how to code could still pull that data sheet into an Excel sheet and do some analysis themselves. So to wrap up, um, in this case, our statistical products are use cases that we are using to define and design the curated data, cap curated data enterprise capabilities and, and to set the agenda to actually build the CDE. Uh, we do have a report and I'm happy to make that available to you if you send me an email. 
So I wanna sum it all up. Uh, this is a curated data enterprise, and this is what we call a cartoon. At the heart of it is the purpose and use. Um, the gold loop um, are the primary, are primarily the research activities. The blue loop are primarily the engagement activities, but as the gray arrow shows, it's an iterative process and all the steps interact with each other. And um, we, we often have to go through them many times in order to create um, a statistical product or to achieve that goal. Uh, the word curated in curated data enterprise, I can't emphasize that enough. It's really important. It means that we document every step of the process, including decisions and trade-offs. And this is important because it will ensure repeatability and reuse of everything we do. And that's how we're going to be able to produce statistical products in a more timely way. So um, I now um, invite you uh, to join us on this journey. Uh, we wanna learn from your vision and ideas for imagining the art of the possible. And I'm gonna hand this over to um, John to lead the first discussion. I'm going to come out of uh, sharing my screen and we will also add the questions um, into the Q&A so that you can follow them. And at this point, Diana, if you could um, let the first poll go, and we're asking you to answer some simple poll questions just to uh, st stimulate the conversation and so we know uh, who you are as well. Um, so with that, John, I'm going to hand it over to you. Uh, Thank you, uh, Stephanie. Okay. And I'm, I must emphasize that I am delighted to, uh, to be here with a lot of the really uh, good people that use uh, statistical data and the ACS uh, for good purposes. Um, so today, we, we really wanna get your input into um, to helping the Census Bureau uh, do the good work to build out the, the CDE. And the first thing, we, while you're filling out the poll, we'll talk about this. The first, uh, question we, we want to ask are what are the major purposes that statistical projects uh, need to support? So um, we're, we're open for suggestions. And I know Stephanie, uh, you know, enumerated quite a few of them in, in the discussion, but in, are there any particular uses that, that, that we should focus on or the Census Bureau should focus on? And you can start to put those in the chat and I will also add the questions there um, in a minute. Things are, are a little slow, but... Um... Can we even tell who's on? My screen is um, big, so. You you can uh, if you click on attendee. Okay, thanks. It looks like we're we not go. getting a whole I lot of responses to the poll. If I'm oh, here we it, go. Right. William O'Hare asked, "Does the Census Bureau keep track of how often each yeah. of the tables that Sally, produce?" Sally answered that question. Oh, great. Okay, thanks, Sally. Um, great. Well, let's let's move along uh, while we're thinking about the first question. You said you finding out um, or discussing what would add value to your own statistical product. What what information could be produced that that would actually enhance your statistical product? And we we've heard about about. Um, Things like, you know, timeliness would be very good, more, more timely data, uh, more granular data, um, uh, data on, um, on children, for example, from a number of people, including Bill O'Hare. Um, but but what, what, what are, there, are there particular needs that you'd like to bring up that, that would add value to your product? Thank you. 
So maybe we can just call on people. <laughs> we'll start with Bill, since Bill, you asked a question. And there was one other question here as well about loving to see more health data in the ICS. I don't know what ICS is, well, but I'm it's- seeing the poll now too. We, we are getting a lot of, a lot of okay. responses to timelier estimates, but, but in particular geographic detail. That seems to be the overwhelming um, response to the poll. But what would add the most value to your statistical product? You guys also have some some things coming into the chat. Okay, we'll check that too then. Yeah, several things are coming in right now. Okay, good. Maybe it was just the different so different uh, areas that people are putting things in. Okay, live chat. Oh, and Joan Namark just put a question in the Q and A as well. Um, Oh, okay, so we're getting some good things here. From Minnesota, um, the, their primary goals are using census data to help city employees with diversity, equity, and inclusion goals, um, the general be well-being of, of their residents, and in, this is interesting, climate change impacts and mitigation. So that's, uh, that, that, that's very interesting. Those are super helpful, right? Yeah, neighborhood-based data. I'm getting a lot of, lots of equity and ethnicity questions, but the racial categories are antiquated. They combine Koreans and South Asians in one group. And I think there's been, there, that, that's actually a very timely discussion because OMB is really requesting information on, um, and, and, and input into redesigning uh, the way race and ethnicity are asked. So, that, that's timely, and I'm sure that you've expressed your uh, <laughs> your your your, uh, your concerns and recommendations to OMB. More frequent data and inclusion in all data products for the U.S. territories. Hispanic language data, data in Spanish. And Joan in the chat, in the Q&A side, said more granular, reliable data for rural areas. And that one we know, but it's good to, good to hear that again. Yeah, definitely. Also, what, what, would, what might help would be, um, Joan, would be data sources that the Census Bureau could, could use to bring to bear on um, providing more granular um, data for rural areas. So recommendations as to where the, as the particular data types uh, they should consider would be helpful, I believe. And and John, I guess I can turn my camera on. This is Sally. I might sort of amend what you just asked for. What would be really helpful is what are the questions that that the data that our data need to support at the different you know rural granularity levels. You know what are those actual questions. Yep. Here's one, but how can how can census help seniors have a better quality of life in terms of the data it collects that can be used by government agencies to plan services and programs? Which is a question that's starting to get very near and dear to my heart <laughs> as I'm approaching being a senior. Um there's also more data for school districts from all the Census Bureau, right? The proposed MENA category, we've heard that. That one's a good one, yeah. Health data. And are people answering the poll on mine? It's just showing zeros, but I don't. Um... Well, I think if you, you scroll down, you can see. Oh, I see. Got um, it. Okay. Some responses. And it looks like um, when, when you look at what, what is your primary community, we're getting a lot of um, the research community and, and um, public policy. Right. Okay. That's, yeah, got it which uh, is, is uh, probably not surprising given this audience. <laughs> um, 
But, um, I, but really, going, going, I think I think Sally really framed the um, framed it very very well. And what are the questions that uh, that that you're dealing with that would, would it would be helpful if the Census Bureau could help you answer them? We like to sometimes frame it as what keeps you up at night? What what answers do you wish you had or could have if, if you could have all access to all the data? There's a lot of input for granular data, um, data for tribal lands. Um, an urban rural breakdown for each data point. Um, that, that, that's very interesting. Uh, uh, a way, a way to when, when the Census Bureau is considering um, protecting confidentiality, um, which they have to do, um, but, but, but um, finding ways to help um, the research community and users um, uh, do trend analysis so they could understand what's, what's happening in their community. This is, there's a question about how to cite census data, which I think if you go to the Census Bureau website and, and search for that, then you can find out how to uh, cite their data. Ah, capture data for Braille, ASL, and other sign language uh, in data collection. That, that's a good suggestion. Um, tables that break out sex, but not age. So I'm combining fewer rows. Um, I know sometimes you get more detail than you want. <laughs> So an, another another question that uh, the Census Bureau is interested in receiving information on is um, what modalities of statistical product dissemination um, would support your needs best. So, for example, an API um, table. I know Sally uh, gave a great description of how the Census Bureau is um, working on making their data access accessible to um, uh, artificial intelligent uh, uh, queries, um, but that that would also be of interest. Is how how should they uh, present their data? Uh, here's a, here's a question, a comment. Margins of error uh, trouble me because of how the data are structured. It is often necessary to add columns and form division for percentages as a statistical product. <laughs> It requires knowledge and statistics to understand this. How can non-technical users understand this? That's a great question. Um, I struggled with that my whole career. <laughs> and, but I think that that is a great question. The Census Bureau has a lot of very smart people that can, uh, I think, work on that. John, do we want to move on to the question about the modalities of statistical product dissemination? Yeah, I, I, I just posed that question. I haven't gotten much uh, response on that. Or are there examples of systems you've used that you said, wow, this is great? Um, or when you're in a system, is there something that you really like or dislike about when you're accessing data? Here's one. In the interest of meeting data users where they are, always have a simple CSV download for any data set. Yeah. And I think sometimes that will mean we can't always uh, give the most detailed data, but you could give aggregates. Yeah. And here, here's a vote for the FTP. Uh, 
summary files. Okay, here, here's the person, Amy uh, Hart, does use the API um, to automate her dashboard. However, most of her users need easier access that they're not really up for using the API. Ways to create combinations of data columns that aren't available in the standard public tables. These are great. Unfortunately, Diana promised that we will be able to have access to all these comments that we can uh, yeah. synthesize as well. An easier way to create thematic maps at the county track level. Yeah, here, here's a question I've heard from other people I have um, talked to about census data. There is a lot of data, but um, uh, sometimes th this is a comment, it can be hard to find the variables and tables that are most relevant. Um, and and that, that's something I've heard before. It's just, you know, there, there's just so much data on the website. Sometimes it's hard to really zero in on what you are particularly interested in. You know, I know the Census Bureau has heard that too and are working on ways to do targeted queries to provide information. So one of the things I really like about the Census Bureau these days is the training they made available to teach people about the margin of error. That's good. Which brings up a, another thing. Do, do any of the users, have you, have you had the opportunity to uh, be in, engaged with some of the Census Bureau data dissemination specialists? Um, I know that that's one way the census goes about helping to disseminate their data is um, uh, are, are using data dissemination specialists. And I just wonder if any of the users have had the opportunity to deal with this resource or take advantage of that resource. Here, and there's a comment on it, it would be helpful to enable real-time collapsing of selected subgroups in ACS tables. Ah, here's one about, um, More, ah, here, here's a good one, more crossover with the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, I mean, there, there's a lot, I, I think that's a really good comment. Stephanie's smiling. Um, but, but the Census Bureau and, and the BLS both produce a, just a, a wealth of, of really good economic data. And sometimes linking them together is a challenge. Not sometimes, it's often a challenge. Uh, so that, that's a good recommendation. And I know that BLS and the Census Bureau um, really want to, are, are trying to work out ways to make that possible. I mean, a lot of times it's the definitions and the purpose for the survey, but yeah. for clarity on that would help as well. And then yeah. matching. John, um, on the Q&A side, I don't know if you want to take a quick look at that. There's some good comments coming in there too. Okay, so here's a comment I should add that my need for VRE in the API is that the volume of data I'm working with is far too massive to manually download uh, the VRE spreadsheet. So I simply don't use the VRE tables even though I prefer to. By the way, I would love to have VRE tables in the API. Well, I can understand that. Um, they're, they're, okay, that's a good question. Well, 
as I'm looking at the time, Stephanie, yeah. maybe we should let people can keep uh, entering, you know, in, information in the chat and we can recover, but maybe we should move on um, to the other three questions that Joe is going to deal with. And as think? we transition, I actually want to ask Sally if she wants to talk a little bit about, um, she added a good clarification to the question about the grants. Um, Sally, do you want to just speak briefly about that and, um, clar you know, say what you, you were proposing for that question as well? Sure. So um, for those of you that uh, caught my talk on Tuesday, So Sally, you're freezing. We're having trouble hearing you. Stephanie, should I publish the grants poll yeah, question? Yeah, go ahead and publish the grants poll. Sorry. You can go ahead and publish them all. It'll probably just make it easier to know what's there and not. Sally, you were frozen. Oh, you're still, you're muted now or something. All right, well, we'll come back. Um, let's start with Joe. Joe's here. He is now going to be called Stephanie, but it's really Joe. Um, <laughs> so um, I am going to move over, but you might still hear me interject a bit. Uh, so there you go. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, all right. Um, I've been watching the polls, um, or I've been watching the poll come in, and uh, geographic detail is really very important to a lot of people, it's almost half of what came in as input, and also public policy. Of course, um, uh, many of you know me, that's near and dear to me, um, for sure. Um, also, I saw a note about collaboration with external researchers. Those of you, those of you who um, heard the talk earlier in the uh, conference know that uh, the word collaboration is obviously very important, very important for the Census Bureau. Um, it's very important for the data user community. So now um, what we want to do is we want to talk about um, how does the Bureau, or what are your suggestions? Uh, we've heard a whole bunch of different data applications here. We have a whole bunch of things that came in uh, about different concerns and different issues that people want to address. So the question is, how do, how do we elicit information uh, uh, about these purposes and uses in a way that is going to be useful um, for the Bureau um, and, and, and for the development, the further development of the ACS. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the key question here that we need to, that we need to think about. Um, so please um, uh, let us know what you think about this. Um, again, it's an opportunity here to, to weigh in on how the Bureau is going to uh, gather information. I mean, everybody who's on this knows there are all kinds of uses of data. And the question is, how, do, how does the Bureau systematically go about doing this? What kinds of suggestions would you have? Um, so um, we'll see. Uh, please put your, uh, um, your comments into the chat. And uh, you know, we're, we're looking for um, certainly um, input, uh, input along these lines. Um, Okay. The um, another question: um, uh, the participation in the development of products. How should how should this how should this occur? Um, how should the bureau go about developing uh, products? You've heard from Sally uh, Keller and from others about the statistical products first. Well, what statistical products first? You know how how do we go about how do we go about doing this? Um, you know how does this occur? And then. Of course, another critical question, um, we need equitable, uh, we need equity. You saw it in the, in the chart about purpose and use and you know, data products first. Uh, how do we go about doing it in a way that's gonna be equitable? I know John has raised this, there were uh, points in the earlier chat about it. Um, and there's also a comment, what do we do about rural America um, and small places? Um, who have systematically, um, you know, have uh, have had difficulty um, getting getting uh, particular estimates. So I'm going to uh, impose on uh, Stephanie a minute here uh, to make sure I can see on on the screen here where the uh, chat is coming in. There's chat and there's Q and A. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the Q and A is what I want. Okay. Right. Well, you want both. So yeah. I go back and forth. 
Okay. Okay. Um, I see one here that um, uh, that is uh, quite important. Uh, very good point. Uh, uh, considering small geographic coalitions, um, uh, data groups um, that could put forth their data needs. Um, for example, uh, we all know that for the public use microdata sample, you need at least 100,000 people. Well, what about uh, smaller counties? There's a, a, an abundance of counties in the country that are well below that. Um, and the data are limited. Um, and uh, you know, how, do, how do we go about getting data, uh, capturing data um, for these uh, smaller places? Um, and of course, there's always the issue of real time. Um, and you know, how do we go about you know, getting data in, in, you know, in real time um, you know, to try to um, provide people with a, a timely view of things that are happening? Um, this whole idea of, of trying to bring in administrative data could really help you. And, and really be uh, you know quite quite useful. So um, that's one thing that has come in. Um, and let me see, we got here in the <clears throat> Q and A. Okay. <laughs> um, I see there's a comment here about um, having uh, to encourage communication, periodic sessions. Um, and uh, advertise um, uh, opportunities for input, newsletters um, on specific topics that the Bureau perhaps is, wants to elicit comment on. Um, you know, that's uh, very important. I think that's a really good suggestion. Um, so uh, what I'm looking at here, let me see if I can keep up with this. Um, all right. Um, Let's see. Um, let's see. Can I go table? Um, okay. More Q and A. Um, all right. So, uh, what about the issue of equity again? Um, the idea. Uh, perhaps we could pick up on that topic uh, that's been raised in the chat. Um, we could uh, talk a little bit further about um, how maybe. Uh, Rural areas could be better represented. I know there are a number of people here from the attendee list who are obviously uh, are really uh, interested in uh, trying to see that enhance. So uh, how can rural areas be better represented in all of this is a very important point. And uh, could you, you know, please comment on that? Let us know, give us input. This is your opportunity, um, you know, so, uh, Please give us give us your comments. All of this, as Stephanie said earlier, we are going to have all these comments, and we want to use them in order to make the curated data enterprise real. Um, and that's what it's all about. It's about concrete use cases that can be brought to bear uh, to see how well how well uh, how well this works, and it has to be done in concert with all of you. So um, I have another uh, item that just came in um, uh, about uh, places data, CDC places data um, discussed during the session yesterday. We'd love to see more cross-agency partnerships to make data available um, that uh, cross links uh, via census geography. So that's a really good comment because if you think about uh, the data, the data that the Census Bureau already accesses from other federal agencies for a common geography, um, that could certainly enhance data for counties and sub-county areas. Um, I'm thinking um, about data the Bureau already acquires, vital statistics information, for example, um, that, that is used. Um, um, I'm thinking about uh, the potential use of data from other agencies to try to um, uh, remedy the undercount of, of young children. Um, um, information uh, potentially expand the use of tax returns, tax return information, which is pretty limited right now. The Census Bureau does acquire data from the IRS, but it's narrowly circumscribed as to what they can, what they can do with it. So 
Uh, another comment, and this, again, another good one, please, this is the kind of stuff we need. Working with the state data centers to form relationships with smaller government organizations and nonprofits. Many smaller entities don't have the capacity uh, to stay up to date with what's happening. So maybe the SDC network can be used in order to enhance that. Um, <clears throat> Uh, information about a topic that is near and dear to me personally about group quarters population, um, trying to get uh, um, useful information um, for low level um, GQs um, at the track level that is. Um, uh, there are a whole series of public health challenges as, as is being pointed out in the chat that uh, local communities face regarding um, for example, nursing homes, other facilities. Um, as um, Stephanie pointed out earlier, we have um, a case study, I'm sorry, a use case, which focuses uh, exactly on that. Uh, you know, how, how uh, can we uh, determine the uh, uh, vulnerability of, of, uh, of nursing homes and uh, people who live in nursing homes in times of climate, um, uh, climate disasters, heat events, and all kinds of situations that uh, threaten uh, vulnerable people. Um, and the question is, that starts with a base of, of information. Um, and anytime you talk about the residents of GQs, you think about uh, the ACS. But we know that ACS data by itself uh, needs to be supplemented along these lines. GQ information can be very difficult to get. There are uh, requirements and, and uh, HIPAA requirements and the like regarding administrative data, but the Census Bureau is already working in, 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 in this vein to try to enhance uh, estimates. Um, so uh, certainly I, I acknowledge then of the public health challenges. That's a comment that just came in. Um, let me see. Okay. All right. So in general, uh, uh, I would say that these are, are, are overall good suggestions. Um, please now, if you can, provide you know, input. And then after the conference, um, this is going to continue. We're going to continue to work um, uh, in this area. And again, to try to figure out how people can participate, um, how, how we can get how do you elicit information on the vast array of topics? And I think we have some good suggestions. The state data centers, also I would imagine the federal state cooperative program on population estimates. Um, there's a brain trust there of, of talent, people who know um, and who can act as conduits. Um, there's a collaborative uh, opportunity for collaboration. One of the reasons why um, we're doing all this is so that we can enhance uh, the input into the Census Bureau, um, you know, so that they could um, have it. Hopefully, what will be a, a more well-informed, um, you know, decision-making process. Because ultimately, priorities have to be established. And it looks like from the poll earlier that small area geography, what Sally Keller has called the availability of small area geography, one of the pillars of, of, of this kind of system where you have um, um, confidentiality, um, competing with data accuracy, and all of that is affected by the desire for certain levels of data for small geographic areas. Um, so um, uh, user input has to be prioritized. Someone has just mentioned this. <laughs> How do you do that, given the vast array of topics? Um, is, is the issue. And uh, I thank you for your input. I think uh, uh, Stephanie, we uh, are at a point now where I'm looking to see if there's anything else. Um, I'd like to just maybe talk for a minute about some of the poll data that's come in. Uh, and you know, regarding the first question, eliciting information about purpose and use, 26% invite proposals from users. Okay, increase outreach and education, 40% of the total. That is the winner, outreach and, outreach and education. But I gravitate towards inviting proposals from users. That's another 26%. Uh, working groups, um, again, the, there's kind of an applied uh, suggestion here about applied work. If you invite proposals from users and you establish working groups, uh, you've got, uh, let's see, 24, uh, 30, you've got 40%, and you combine that with outreach and education, um, that's pretty uh, pretty interesting and uh, 
uh, quite a powerful statement, I think, that users want to be involved. Um, do you use census data when writing grants? 69% said yes. Okay. Hmm? What kind of what kind of data are you using? And that question, um, as Sally's suggestion, should be broadened to say, what social and demographic data do you use? Um, there's currently a pilot that's being undertaken at the at Georgetown uh, with their capstone projects that are looking through. Uh, they're starting with program. Um, solicitations from Department of Commerce and seeing what kind of data are requested as part of those solicitations. So stay tuned, we'll have some results uh, on that. When we did an earlier look at that, we found that it was primarily population data, poverty, um, and urban rural were the three top um, data elements needed. But I think when you get into different topic areas, there's probably more data as well. Okay, uh, yeah. Sally's Sally, point. do you wanna? You're still muted, Sally. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Go on to the next one. And yeah. Yeah. Um, no, as I said earlier, we did have earlier results from the poll that, that show geographic detail. It's now up to 56%. Uh, well, so I think the statement there is pretty clear. And then public policy and the research community uh, are the two top uh, primary communities, but I don't want to take anything away. Um, you know, representation at this conference doesn't necessarily represent all the people who are out there. Um, so we have to make sure we remember that, uh, you know, for example, uh, the business community and commerce shows up at about 8% of the total, but it's still, you know, a significant uh, chunk. And uh, um, we need to make sure we re we remember that we represent a, a wide swath of users, users but uh, maybe not all users here. Um, uh, but again, the geographic detail becomes so important in all this. Uh, so um, uh, grant writing is gaining seven, up to 71% of the total as we go through this. And again, outreach and education shows up as first about eliciting information. Um, but there's a lot, what is being said in this poll about eliciting information is there's a whole group of people upwards of 40%, over 40% that wants, that want a hands-on uh, kind of view of things uh, through a working group or by being invited to submit proposals. Um, and this goes back to the whole use case thing um, about actually having things concrete on the ground to be able to demonstrate the utility of what we're doing. So All right. I think, yeah. Okay, thank good. you, John and uh, Joe. We will um, be able to, um, are there any other words of wisdom or questions we didn't ask that you would like um, to ask or just comments? And if we did not discuss your comment, rest assured we will be, um, we will be using our machine learning and uh, AI techniques to go through this and, and winnow out the themes. Um, I think we can also just do this by hand as well. Uh, John, any other uh, words of wisdom you wanted to add to this? No, I think it's been a really, really good um, session. We've gotten a lot of a lot of really good input from the users, so that is uh, that, that that that's very rewarding. Thank you all. Thank you. So I think we could end a little bit early. Um, I'm not seeing other comments come in either in the chat, uh, although it keeps going to the, let's see, which way do I need to go? Um, great, uh, thank you, Amy. Uh, thank you for the heart. <laughs> That's always nice and the thumbs up as well. Uh, and then on the Q&A, the same thing. I think we're sort of at the end of our comments on this and Sally, thanks for adding um, your, your thoughts here as well. Uh, so we'll give you 10 minutes of your time back in the morning so you can get to the next session. And this was just terrific. And hopefully if you are interested in um, partnering or participating or learning more, whether it's to get a copy of our report or to find out more about what we're doing, um, I am easy to find. You can just Google me at Stephanie Shipp at UVA um, or at uh, just SSHIPP at virginia.edu. Don't forget two S's and two P's there uh, to reach me. So thank you all. Uh, that was great.